What is up, everyone? It is Akuna Matata, and I am finally back for another video. And today's video will be part one in a two part series detailing how I won the World of Colonists number eight open tournament Lazy Sunday against 84 people across 25 different countries. And I was the last one standing. And so today we'll be going through my semi final appearance and do more of a placement analysis. Just a little bit of background of what World of Colonists is. Well, World of Colonists is a community that hosted 10 total Lazy Sunday tournaments throughout 2021. And the tournament consisted of three preliminary games at a very fast speed. Then the top 16 or however many teams would make it to the playoffs where they would play semifinals at a fast speed. And if those winners would go to the championship and also play at a fast speed. However, unfortunately, World of Colonists had stopped doing these Lazy Sunday tournaments but we're hoping in the future that they return because these were a lot of fun. So today's video will be a very high level board analysis of my semi-final matchup where I found myself as first pick. Here's a recreation of the board. Feel free to take a minute, pause the video, and analyze these tiles. Comment below what you think the best spot is for first position and why. Definitely say your reasoning. You know, there's really no right or wrong answer, and by the end of this video, you'll see there's still no right or wrong answer. So I'm very just genuinely curious to see each one of y'all's opinions. All right. So now there's so many great spots, right? And I'm expecting a lot of diverse picks in the comments. And so whenever I'm analyzing a board, there are six things that I want to look at. Production, resources, expansions, ports, outs and competition i consider this my prep oc you know the prep prep that's what i used when i first started playing Catan. just these four things that i was looking at and i think i could win you know 30 percent of my games beat my family for sure beat some of my friends but now that i'm playing at a higher level and playing better competition i definitely need to include the oc down below that has definitely elevated my game to a next level so I recommend if you're looking to make the transition from a casual player to a more experienced player, these two OC components are something you definitely want to look into. So first off with production, when you're playing Catan, you know those number tokens have those dots below the numbers. The sixes and eights, they have five dots. Those represent production. Those are called pips. And the more dots you have, the greater your production. This is representing of how common or how often you'll roll a six or an eight, right? The probability of rolling a six or an eight is greater than rolling a two or a three, right? And so this is just a visual representation for players. The more total pips you have in that settlement spot, the greater your overall production. Resources. How many different resources do you have? Do you have two wood and a wheat? Or do you have wood brick wheat uh, or wheat sheep? Things like that. Uh, the more different resources, oftentimes the better. But are these co resources complementary, right? You know, wood and brick, they go together. They make roads. Uh, wheat and ore, they go together. They're able to make cities. Or wheat sheep, you get the cities and the dev cards. Those, those would be complementary resources. And then lastly, are these resources scarce, right? So if you're looking at the board as a whole, look at what resources are the more most scarce. Do you have a 2 and a 10, and but then a 6 in brick? Well, maybe getting on that 6 brick is actually a lot more valuable now just because that induces trades and also gives you an advantage over the other players. Next with expansion and ports. For both of these, we wanna see, are they first off strong? You know, is it a strong port with a lot of material to go into it? Or are the expansion spots uh, aimed towards getting in the middle of the board and napping up another great, which would have been like a ninth settlement spot? But almost more important is, are these attainable? You know, what is the likelihood that you actually get to this port or get to this expansion? Because often if it's far out of reach or it might take too long to get there, there's not as much value to it. Next with outs, where can our second settlement be? So specifically within this example, we're picking first. It's pretty difficult. We have to analyze where second, third, and fourth are going for both of their settlements. And what are we going to be left with for our eighth pick? Now, after you find your options for the second settlement, you repeat your prep one through four, P-R-E-P, -E and analyze that spot. Is that a good spot? And in combination with our first pick, does that work? Is that a great setup? We wanna to try to analyze that as quickly as possible. And then lastly, with competition. 
all right, we have our setup, everything's planned out, but how do we shape up with everyone else, right? Sure, we have a strong setup, but this guy, we're letting them get a monster setup, and they're going to outpace us on everything we're trying to do as well. That's something we want to try to avoid as much as possible. So now let's go back to our first pick, and let's use our prep OC to analyze what we think the best spot is here. First, just with production, let's only focus on these settlement spots that have the most production out of any other ones on the board. Now we'll list these as A, B, C, D, and E, and we'll analyze each one of these individually using production, resource, expansion, ports, outs, and competition, our prep OC. First off with A. So first off, we got the 649 or wheat sheep setup. We have 12 points of production. We have three unique resources and they're very complementary with each other. With just the or wheat sheep, we can buy cities and development cards. That's two things we can buy just with these three resources. Ex expansion spots, however, I would argue are relatively weak. You know, you're either getting on the desert six two for one port or the nine two brick with the also the desert. So basically we're not getting anything new here. We're just doubling up on what we already have. Ports, however, I would argue are strong only because of the rest of the board. The rest of the board has so much wood that this port has a lot more value now going forward. So now let's look at these second settlement outs. Now this board is completely contingent on, in this case, fifth position, taking this 8-5-10 rather than the 8-4-10, which I think is a big mistake because the board opens up so much for these monster setups, right? So let's just play it out like this. We picked here, 6 4 9 first, second spot, third spot, fourth spot, fifth spot, sixth spot. Now the second settlement picker has yet to pick, and he'll pick one of these three positions. Whichever one he picks, we have the option of the other two, and we're pretty happy, right? So our second settlement outs are very strong, in my opinion. Let's say second position takes the 10 5 8, we get the 8 4 3. If they take the 8 4 3, we get the 5 8 10. You'll see that a lot of these positions have all five resources and strong expansions, whereas we will not have all five resources no matter what initially. Now, let's go to the 845 as I mentioned before. I think this is a correct play. And the board closes up tremendously after that. These two spots are completely taken. And now we have either the 5 8 10 or the 8 10 with the second picker yet to pick. So whichever one he takes, I recommend you take the other. Um, I think more than likely, second position takes this 8, 5, 10 and gets a monster set up. But we're actually pretty happy with an 8, 10, 3 for 1 port here. We make up for us not having the strong port initially. We get wood to go with our port and we add more sheep to kind of balance our or wheat sheep production. So our so second settlement outs, I believe, are still strong because I like this 8-10 pairing. Competition, still strong. And spoiler alert here, no matter what, the competition on this board is extremely strong because there's so many great setups and complementary resources packed together. Now looking at our B option. We have an 8-4-5 that I mentioned before I like the pick um, because it closes out a lot of the board. And we're pointing right right here to a three for one port. Now the production here, 12 points, three different resources, very unique. Wood and brick are very complementary to each other. Expansion spots, I would say are average and only because more than likely they're gonna be blocked out. Someone might pick down here at the eight nine or if we just mentioned before, someone might take this eight ten. So maybe pointing the road left is probably the better play. However, we do have the option on getting an ore. It's just two roads away. Ports, average. We have a three for one port, which is great and phenomenal because you're doubling up on a on the wood, the strongest wood, as well as getting on a brand new number of sheep. But as we saw before, chances are it might be taken. So that diminishes the value of this port quite a bit. Now let's look at the second settlement outs. Let's say we pick on the eight, four, five first, and then just uh, playing out maybe in my head would be the 649, 596, uh, 9, 10, 11, 843, 
10, 5, 8, and 6, 3, 11. So now everyone else has picked. It's our turn. What are our options? Either a 6, 3. You know, we don't have any wheat yet. We really would like some wheat. The 10, 9. These aren't the strongest settlement outs. They're pretty weak. And although closing the rest of the board and not opening it up is valuable, it actually hurts you quite a bit whenever you're the first one picking. Competition, still strong. In fact, they're a lot stronger than we will be if we pick this 845 first, in my opinion. Although it's a strong spot, although you get on the best wood and the best brick with one spot, I don't really like the setup whenever you're considering the OC part of our prep. Now looking at C, it's neighbor, the 8510. Now you have the option of either pointing up or to the right, either if you want to get on the ore or just double up on the wood for three for one port. Production, 12 points, just as before. Three unique resources, complementary as we said before. Expansions, they're average because you're either getting on this great 910, but you might be contested. That diminishes the value, the likelihood of you getting it. It's kind of a little bit of a risk. And then the other expansions are just doubling up on numbers you already have. Ports, I would say, are, are average still. You know, this 3 for one strong, but it's not giving you a brand new number as the, the before situation did, right? And this ore port is not the greatest just because, in my opinion, ore port is probably the weakest port of any other port in the game. You know, you normally want to keep ore, especially on this board, um, when there's a lot of wheat, chances are there's a lot, a lot to pair with the ore. And so you're not necessarily stuck with the ore, which you would want to port out. Now looking at second settlement spots, the board has opened up quite a bit because you picked on the 8510 rather than the 845. So we have strong second settlement outs, right? We have this 5411, 6113, other 6113, you know, a lot of options and opportunities to expand now that we know no one can take after us with our first pick. Uh, we have the road material and the settlement material to kind of expand and take some of these other spots if we want. Competition, however, it's insane. It's, in fact, I would argue it's, it's too insane and better than what we can be despite uh, us having the option of mapping out our expansion spots, right? Look at, look at these pairings. We got a 596 with an 834. All five resources, all killer production. We got the 649 with the 5810. Lots of wood to go with the wood port. We saw this pairing before. And then we got the 91011 with the 843. All five resources, strong ore and wheat, and a brick port to complement it all. I mean, we're not looking that great, honestly, in the grand scheme of things. Option D, the most production out of any position in this board, the 596. Now there's three unique resources. The ore and the wheat are very complementary and the brick is pretty valuable on this board. Expansion spots, however, are very weak. They're so weak that if you point up, you're risking getting cut off to this 910. But if you point to the right, sure you're doubling up on the ore, but you're just getting a 12 wood. You might be able to double up on the wheat if this isn't taken. Chances are it's probably blocked off, but, but that's about it. Ports, very weak. I already said before how I'm not the biggest fan of an ore port, and that's already risky enough trying to try to get to it. So now let's look at our second settlement outs. Now this, of course, as I said before, is contingent on the 8510 being picked rather than the 845. The board's opened up quite a bit. Uh, second pick has yet to pick their seventh spot. And so we'll get one of these stars. We've seen this map before. Second settlement outs, still very strong. Se uh, second pick takes us 8, 5, 10. We have all five resources, strong, everything. If uh, second pick takes the 8, 3, 4, we have pairing roads, lots of uh, wheat and ore, great ports to go to. Um, just a lot of production in general. Definitely the most production out of anyone else on the board. Competition, strong. As always, now we'll move it over. Fifth position takes the 845 instead. So we've seen this board again, as I said. We have either the uh, 1058 or the 810. More than likely, second position takes this 
10, 5, 8, and we're, we have this 8, 10. Now we have all five resources, pretty good production as well, best uh, brick, best wood, and a three for one port. That helps us not have a good port, but we don't have the best expansion spots still. We still have strong settlement outs, I would say, because you know we're not in a bad position. We're still in a great spot. Competition, it's strong, and I would argue that there's uh, placements that are stronger than us. Prefer uh, specifically the second position, I think, has a better setup than us. However, we're definitely not out of it, and we definitely have a shot at doing a lot of damage with this setup. Lastly, let's look at E. We have the 8, 5, 10 down below. 12 points of production, two resources, weak expansions because you're just doubling up on these numbers, very strong ports. There's a lot of wheat on this board and you can't go wrong with the three for one. However, let's not spend too much time on this. Let's be honest, this is definitely the weakest of our spots that we've analyzed so far. Especially if you look at the second settlement outs, they're just average. I'd say second position here either takes the 6311 or the 810. Um, you better hope that they take the 810 so you can have the 6311. Otherwise, you're kind of stuck with a pretty poor production of getting some brick and ore maybe. Maybe you use this brick port quite a bit. I don't know. Not only do you not have a strong setup, but the competition has insane setups. And so you really put yourself behind by taking this settlement spot first, in my opinion. Now, let's say the board opens up more with this 8, 5, 10 instead. We've mapped out all the positions, so these are our options. Now we have pretty good second settlements outs. However, the competition is still just too insane. I think we still have one of the weaker setups. Um, we, our only option here would probably be taking this 4, 5, 11 and instead expanding and beating people out to these spots. And that would give us the best chance. And then we'd have to connect for road. However, that might be pretty difficult to do since a lot of people might be thinking of the same. And whoever controls the middle road within this board probably has a better chance at winning. Out of these five, I think it's really between just two spots for our first pick, A and D. Now let's compare the two. Let's look closely at the combinations, whether we pick 6, 4, 9 first or 5, 9, 6 first. Now this is on a board that is open. Uh, where the 8510 is being picked rather than the 845. So here, in the comments, tell me below, title it Board Open 1. Who do you think stronger, blue or red? Blue with the 649, 348, or we cheap set up with some wood to fill into the port, or red with the coordinated roads, lots more wood, um, everything except for sheep and strong production. Now, Board Open 2. Instead, we have red with the 384596 and blue with the 649-5810. Who do you think is stronger, red or blue? I think both are monster setups for sure, but I think it's undeniable that red has all five resources, all extremely strong production, four plus points of production for each resource, um, and they're in a great position. Now, instead, let's look at the combinations on a, a very closed board. The 845 is being picked now less second settlement spots for these two. Here we have red picking first with the 596 and blue picking second with the 649. Who do you think stronger, red or blue? I mean, obviously in this situation with the closed board, this is worst case scenario for the first pick. However, I do think that it's more accurate to how you should expect high level players to to pick. So this is more reality based uh, example in my opinion. Now instead in this situation blue picks first. 649 uh, paired with the 810, 596 with the 1058. This is blue's worst case scenario. However, I think whenever you compare the two worst case scenarios, blue has a better worst case scenario if that makes sense, right? I think red being over here is a little more stuck, a little less uh, in a strong position than blue with that pairing, right? I think for this reason, the 649 is my favorite pick to pick first, right? And for three more reasons as well. So if we pick the 649, we pair it with the 810, we pair it with the 1058, we have the best setup for or wheat cheap. No one has more production than us within those realms. And so we have a more defined path to 10 points, right? We know we're going to get largest army and we're able to city and settle with the resources that we have. 
Also, by not picking the 596 first, we do not land on this 5 brick. That is a very, very easy early robber target. We want to avoid being stopped at the beginning of this game as much as possible in order for us to get to that port as quickly as possible. And then three, mentioning that port, we have an uncontested first port. The 649 has the greatest port on this board, which is a wood port. Whereas this 596 just has the ore port, one of the weakest ports in the game. And that's even if you want to risk going up there to try to get it. So now let's depict reality. What actually happened in this game? I picked first. And as I just said, I went to 649. Second position, they picked the 5910 instead of the 596. I thought this was really interesting, and I don't think I agree with it. Primarily because I think the only idea here is that there's so much wheat that you'd get on it on the way back, and you kind of want to nag some of the sheep because it's a little more rare on this board. However, when you look at all the other wheat spots, they're normally paired with sheep. So you can kind of expect to be near or on sheep for your second pick as well. I think the idea is you get to this 3-1, and you have four out of the five resources just with this initial setup. Third position then picks a 9-6-12, and I also don't think I agree with this. You know, whenever you're picking third position, what I do anyway is I look at spots that are really similar. And spots that are similar on this board are the 9-11-10 and the 9-6-12. Those are together. And then you also have the 8-5-4 and the 8-4-3. Same resources. Very same production. However, when you compare the two, what are the difference between the 9612 and the 91011? The only difference is one point of production from the wood. That's it. That's the only difference. When you look at the differences between these two spots, you get another point of production with sheep and another point of production for brick. And so I think this 845 is actually tremendously better than the 834, whereas the 9612 is only slightly better than the 91011. And so for third pick, I think I would pick the 845 and point left. You know, I really am okay with this pick, though, just because it comes with the idea of starting with the free road to begin the game, which is very valuable, in my opinion. So fourth position, I think I would pick exactly the way they did, 9, 11, 10, 845, pointing the roads in this exact direction. Fourth position then, or third position then takes the 843, of course, points to the brick port. I agree with that now. And then second position, really tough decision, right? They're missing wheat and they're missing trees. So I expected them to take the 8, 5, 10 down here. However, they wanted to have the stronger wheat and they expect this spot to be open, expanding, and then thus uh, setting up their win condition for longest road. So I am okay with that. Gives us a little bit more, gives them the best ore setup within the entire board. Um, but it also allows me to get the 8, 5, 10. And now I have my killer setup. Um, and at this point, I think my biggest competition is fourth position if they can get to one of these three for one ports. So this is the game, how the game actually ended up going. I talk about having a defined win condition, but unfortunately, I couldn't draw a knight to save my life at the beginning of this game. So instead, it helped me build up greater, right? Uh, Red, who I kind of dogged on this setup, actually almost snuck a win here. They had nine points at the end of it, took longest road on their last turn before I won the game, and they also locked army for sure, since I'm not even close to getting past them with army. Unfortunately, I think one of my biggest mistakes this game was getting a city on this 8-5-10 rather than buying two development cards, which I think was a huge mistake. Um, it's just so juicy to get to uh, beef up these wood ports spots uh, for my port. Uh, ended up winning with 10, but by far the most production because the board left me with another huge uh, 12 points of production down here as my second settlement spot. And that's it, everyone. Thank you for watching. I'm really excited to read your comments. Please also include any feedback you have for me. How can I make these videos better? What else do you want to see out of my channel? I'm, I'm going to read every single comment, so I really appreciate your time. Thanks.